Bueno, no se tienen que salir. Ahorita viene una magistral, que es la de Lucas Simons. Hi, Lucas. How are you? I'm very good. Thank you so much. Greetings from the Netherlands. Uh, happy birthday. <laughs> Merci. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to ask you a question before we begin. Uh, do you want to introduce, like, um, or I have your bio. Do you want me to introduce you? Is it okay? Um, please, if you can do that, uh, by all means. And uh, and if not, I can also do it myself. But uh, if you want, uh, that will be better. Yeah, I will. I just wanted to ask you if you wanted to highlight something. <laughs> But well, thank you very much. I think it's just one minute. Should we begin? Well, yeah, I think I will begin because it was like the same Zoom from the others. But well, I'm really happy to introduce you to Lucas Simons. He's a really, um, um, it's great that you have uh, accepted Lucas uh, to be with us. Really inspiring books you have. We're going to talk a little bit about you. Uh, Lucas Simon, at the age of 30, he set up at Certified, currently the largest certification program for sustainable, for, for sustainable coffee, cocoa, and other agri commodities. Later, he founded New Foresight, a strategic consultancy company dedicated to turn the global sustainability challenges, market opportunities, and Scope Insight, a business intelligent company dedicated to, say, to set the world standard for making farmer organizations more professional. Um, if you want a different outcome, you have to change the rules of the game. And I think that's the most inspiring thing that uh, made us like um, admire your work with us and follow this. And I hope you can work more with fisheries. Um, well, <laughs> go ahead. I, I know you have been an activist for more than 20 years in 16 different sectors and markets, and you're a trusted advisor for the top trade and industry in food and agriculture, governments and NGOs, and leading multilateral organizations. It's great also that you can work with us, with the industry. And well, thank you very much. Thank you so much. Um, shall I start my uh, presentation? I have 25 minutes or half an hour. Of course, yes, please do. You and can see your screen. Do you need some help with something? No, I'm, I'm good, I know Zoom. Uh, I just want to confirm that because I don't speak Spanish, that there is translation going on. Is that correct? Yeah, there is translation from English to Spanish and vice versa. All right. Then my apologies to all of the listeners that I don't speak your language. I can only do it uh, in English. I hope you forgive me. Uh, I'm here. I'm Lucas Simons. I'm in the Netherlands at the moment. And yes, it is my birthday. Uh, and so at my, uh, at my end of the ocean, it's uh, five o'clock in the afternoon. And after this presentation, I will start celebrating my birthday with my family. But till now, I'm very happy to be here. And um, I would like to share with you a presentation that is about market transformation. How do you change the market, the seafood industry, actually, so that we can also solve the sustainability problems? And I will, um, I will share with you a presentation. Can you see this? I'm sure you can now, right? Yeah, excellent. All right, this will take about 20, 25 minutes, but uh, I, I hope I can do it that quickly because usually I get very excited about this story and then I can talk about it for hours. Um, and so what I will share with you today is also what I teach at the executive MBA schools and business schools all over Europe. Uh, and so this is the key to understand why we have all of these sustainability problems in, in, the, in the seafood sector and in many other sectors and what you can do to actually change it. And so it's called sustainable market transformation. Uh, and what I would talk to you about is uh, that change is going through phases and it's very important that you recognize in which phase is the seafood sector. It's also important to understand what's going on in other sectors, the coffee sector, cocoa sector, palm oil, soy, sugar, etc. There are similar problems going on and there are sim similar issues being dis uh, discovered at the moment. Very important to learn what's going on there. Uh, I will also talk about the importance of engaging the government. I believe that this is the most important step or the sector is facing now. 
And so I will end this presentation with actually a, a suggestion on how we could do that. I hope you are excited. And uh, I was already introduced, uh, but so my name is Lucas Simons. I'm CEO and founder of New Foresight, a strategic consultancy company, and Scope Insight, an, a, a company that measures the professionalism of pharma organizations or actually um, uh, from fishery, fishery organizations as well. My former job, I was uh, director of Oot Certified. Perhaps you're familiar with it. It's the largest label for sustainable coffee and cocoa. Um, and, uh, and I started that organization a long time ago. I've been recognized internationally by the World Economic Forum and Ashoka. Uh, and I was named six times uh, top um, sustainability influencer in the Netherlands. And I've also written books about the issue that, you, that, I will, uh, that I will teach you now, or that I will show you now, is about how to change systems. If you want to learn more about it, Changing the Food Game is my first book, and we are about to launch our second book with the business schools um, in 11th of November, actually, that's called Changing the Game. So without further ado, I want to bring to you three messages. If you look at the seafood sector, there are enormous sustainability challenges, and they've been there for a while. But I want you to understand that these challenges are not problems to be fixed, you need to understand that these problems, these sustainability challenges are outcomes of the way the seafood sector is organized. And so they're not a problem to be fixed. They are an outcome of the current system. And it also means that there are not simple solutions and let's not, let's do another project or just another certification and we'll have it solved. We need to start thinking about how to change the system because only that will change the outcome and that will solve the problem in a more structural way. And how to do that is understanding that that system change that goes through phases every time. And you will recognize those phases and you will probably be able to pinpoint where we are now, but also that means that where, what is the next step that we need to do? And so these are my key three messages throughout this presentation. Well, um, this whole conference, by the way, congratulations with such a, a great turn up and, and such a great topic, but this is all about sustainability in the sector. And I don't need to explain explain to you what those uh, those issues are. You are all experts in this sector. There's huge overfishing going on and there's disappearing species, large scale bycatch, unsustainable fishery methods. Uh, we are damaging the fishery habitats, ghost fishing, which I believe is one of the largest um, uh, polluters in the oceans when it comes to plastic waste. There's illegality, there's living income and livelihood issues, while millions and millions of people are, are dependent on their employment and their income on, on the seafood sector. And there's this transnational stealing of fish where, where other nations are just outside the border uh, stealing the fish. Well, and then there's the issues of labor rights and labor practices and bonded labor. And the, is just, the issues goes on and on and on. And I'm pretty sure that none of these um, uh, challenges are new to you. They all have been there in the sector for decades. And so how come we haven't solved them by now? Well, that has to do with how the, se the sector is organized. And these issues that you, are so, that you are faced with are not unique. You are, of course, experienced this as your problem, but I can tell you that every sector, and I've visited every of them, I've traveling all over the world, and every market, every agricultural sector, but also every other market out there, the energy markets, the chemical industry, the building construction area, the textile industry, they're all facing huge sustainability problems. And that means that it is not a coincidence that you, the seafood sector, is facing these issues. It's not a coincidence, it's not bad luck. It's, it's systemic. It's the way we are dealing with each other, the way we're organized that leads to these problems everywhere. So let me ask you a question. And I'm sorry that you can't answer. I'd love to stand in front of you live and see your responses. But in your mind, see if you can answer this question. You probably recognize this game, right? All over the world, we recognize this game as the game of monopoly. And so I, my question to you is that if you would play this game long enough, what is the outcome of this game? Well, as you know, if you play this game long enough, one will win because they have all the homes and all the hotels and all of the assets and the rest is bankrupt. And we call that very good fun. Now, another question, if you would play this game 10 times, what is then 10 times the outcome? Well, if you think about it, it's not a trick question, 10 times the same outcome. One will win, have all the assets and hotels, and the other goes bankrupt. And even if you would play this game 100 times, it is 100 times the same outcome. And that's interesting, because why is that? Why is the, this game, if you follow this game, you have the same outcome every time? Well, 
That is because the game has been designed like this. And the rules of the game are as such that if you play this game according to these rules, you always have the same outcome. Now, it might be that you win one time and I win another time, but the outcome is always the same. And so let me ask you a question. If every market, and particularly the seafood market, has these problems all over again and we can't seem to solve them, could it be that it has to do with the rules of the game? And as we all know, it doesn't help that if we're playing Monopoly that we give money to the ones that are losing, like, oh, here you go. It might feel very good and they can go one more round, but the outcome of the game is always the same. And the only way to get a different outcome is if you change the rules of the game. The only way if we want to solve our sustainability issues is that we understand what the rules of the game are and that we have to change them. And that's what market transformation is all about. Again, message number one, the problems that we see, the challenges that we see are not a problem to be fixed. We have to understand that they're an outcome of the system and therefore we need to change the rules of the system. But what are they? Well, let me show you. I talked about the, the, the environmental issues and the economic issues and the social issues. What causes these outcomes of the system? What are the rules of the game? Let me explain it to you. There are four forces that if they come together, they produce this, these problems. And in your mind, try to follow the logic. It's not a science, it's just a logic. And then you hopefully you will agree that the way this works, this sector works, leads to these outcomes. The first one is, how does the market operate? What The whole value chain of buying fish, what is the market re requiring? What are they demanding? What are they rewarding? Are we looking for the best species and are we willing to pay top dollar for that? Or is it as low price, lowest price, lowest price? As long as it is fresh and of course meets food safety standards, we don't, give, we don't care where it comes from. We don't care how it is produced. We are willing, we are only willing to buy it if it is lowest price. That is how markets work. Now we can blame the market, but this is how it works. And this is what they need to do in order to make a profit and survive as well. But this is only one of the forces that determine the system. The other one is, how are we catching that fish? What is the production base? What type of fisheries are there? Is there modern fleets or many smallholder fishers out there? And what are they using to catch the fish? Is, are these sustainable measures or is this unsustainable? And so now you understand already that these are two forces. When they meet, they reinforce each other. If we produce fish in an unsustainable way and markets only go for lowest price, lowest price and don't care, we of course tend to continue fishing more and more in an unsustainable way. And that's how you win. That's how you get the business. So it's a reinforcing mechanism, but there are two other forces as well. The other one is what is the role of governments? Because more than in any other sector that I've seen, uh, the seafood, uh, the, the seas, the oceans, the, the waters are public goods. Now, what is the, the governance of the fishery management systems? What are the policies? How do we manage these stocks? Are we managing them well, or are we actually benefiting from getting as much at, uh, out of the oceans as possible? And so now you start to see how these three forces come together, where markets are going for the lowest price, and we don't care that much where it comes from. We are fishing in an unsustainable way, and that seems to be the only way to survive. And meanwhile, governments are not managing the stocks, are not managing the public goods, and are actually rewarding, further rewarding, the unsustainable behavior. And then finally, what are our alternatives? Are there other sources of fish available that are even, uh, uh, as attractive as, uh, as others or equally priced? Well, no, because once either they're not or they're much more expensive. And now we seem to get stuck because market players can only continue to go for lowest price, lowest price, because that's how they win. Farmers can only continue with unsustainable production methods and fish more and more because that's how they survive and win. And then finally, and, and then uh, governments are not managing this, the, uh, this enough or not in a sustainable way, further enforcing this issue. But any alternative out there is more expensive or not attractive or, or, or. There are always reasons why not. And so this is when a system gets stuck. It doesn't only happen in seafood. It happens in the coffee sector. It happens in the cocoa sector. It happens in the energy market. Every time a combination of these four forces leads to the outcome of the game. These are your rules of the game. And that explains why also the seafood sector is struggling with these huge, huge problems that are actually threatening your own survival. So how do you change that? Well, like I said, change goes through phases. You cannot 
You cannot in one go say, you know what? Let's change it all together. Let's everybody from now on is going to do it differently because that's not how it works, right? So that means that we, if you can't do it in once, if you cannot change it in one go, you have to grow towards it. There are different phases, different maturity phases that you have to go through in order to ultimately solve these issues. And the interesting thing is, it's like, like the maturity phases of children. We, I'm, I'm sure you, if you have children or you, you, you know people with children or you've been a child yourself, you recognize those phases from, from a baby phase where we don't know what we're doing and we're learning to walk and we're crawling and we're putting everything in our mouth to the teenager phase where we're combating and we wanna be the best and we wanna be liked to the adult phase to the finally the mature phase. Now, Changing systems, changing the rules of these, this game goes through the same phases as well. And it looks like this. These are the four phases that we recognize in every market, not just seafood, not just agriculture, actually. In every market, it goes through these phases. Actually, there are five phases. And you will recognize the logic. And you will probably recognize where you are now as a sector. The first phase is actually that the market is operating as it has always done. We're buying for the lowest price. We're fishing in an unsustainable way. Governments are not managing their, sea, their fish stocks and their oceans in the right way. And there are problems. There have always been problems. But you know what? We don't consider it a problem. This can continue for a long time until there is a crisis in many cases. And suddenly there's reports about overfishing or the fishing nets and the ghost wear or something flares up and then suddenly it becomes an issue. And then the first response of the industry, this sector in general, including governments, is no, that's not true. No, that's that that doesn't that that's not right. It's false, fake news. The reports are not true. Uh, it's somebody else's false. And the the what the industry wants to do is go back to business as usual as soon as possible. But if we're lucky and the crisis continues to come back and NGOs make it a crisis and start campaigning and there's and then more reports are coming from research firms then the first phase starts. This is the inception phase. This is the baby phase, where we're starting to do a lot of projects. We start to train fishermen. We are experimenting with new fishing gear. We uh, want to introduce new consumption. We want to uh, um, uh, train the, cons the consumer. There's a lot of projects going on. And this is the baby phase, because we're crawling around. We're putting a lot of things in our mouth. But we're, we're, there's very little cohesion. We're not really know what we're doing. This is an important phase, because First of all, we, we agree that there is a problem, which is already better than it was. And we should learn now from what works and what doesn't work. The problem is, and this is happening in the seafood sector as well, is that we start to confuse that doing more projects will actually solve the problem. And that is the biggest mistake ever. It happens in every sector. We're spending billions of dollars of doing more and more projects, but it doesn't change the rules of the game. It's just a project. and so. A good baby phase is where we learn, a bad baby phase is where we get addicted to doing more and more projects and everybody thinks that we're doing great. Everybody has great pictures of people smiling, beautiful fish, the sun always shines, but the sector is not changing, the rules of the game are not changing. Then at some point we're moving to the second phase, this is the, the teenager phase of change. And this is where we are starting to introduce competitive mechanisms, standards, labels, certification programs. This is where if you introduce one label where some uh, uh, retailers and, and fishing, uh, um, uh, fishing vessels and fleets can differentiate themselves like, hey, look, I'm doing a good thing. Now, in this phase, it's very important to give those first movers first mover advantage so that they also win in the market. They, they win more clients, they can command better prices, they differentiate in the market, they have a better reputation. Uh, people, the media writes more uh, about them, campaigns from NGOs start to focus on other, this is all great, but what happens is that if the first movers win with the label, their competitors will do the same thing, but something different, because you never follow your competitor. And before you know it, you've got two, three, four, 30, 50 labels. And I believe seafood is the sector with, with the absolute most labels out there. Now, I've worked in many sectors. In coffee, we got eight. In cocoa, we got uh, six. In cut flowers, we got 15, and I believe seafood has somewhere between 30 and 50 labels, all competing, all adding to the noise, all adding to the confusion, all adding to the belief that if you would only do more certification, we would solve the problem, which is of course not true because we have four forces that we ultimately need to change. And 
projects by themselves nor certification doesn't change that system. And so here we are with a lot of competitions and a lot of labels. And of course, when with every label that there is, the confusion uh, increases, the value in the market decreases, the costs go up. And of course, retailers will be less willing and consumers especially less willing to pay. And that means that the retailers will move the cost into the value chains and the value chains will have to absorb the cost. And now before you know it, we start to compete between labels. They need to be, become lower cost, lower cost, cheaper, easier. And then as a final attempt to make sense of it all, everywhere this is happening, we are trying to benchmark uh, all of these standards, create an equivalency tool, and then compare them just to maintain some form of order and quality in the sector. But this is the end of the second phase. Then the third phase, the industry should be ready for the third phase. And this is where it's not just, uh, let's do more certification, we need to ask different questions. And this is the, the, the phase where we should ask ourselves, what does a sustainable uh, seafood sector look like in Peru or in Lima or in Latin America? How do we get there? What is the strategy to get there? Who should be doing what? What is the role of the government? And what is the role of, um, of the industry? And what is the role of NGOs, for example? And what is the role of all of those standards? And so this is the, the phase where we design the new rules of the game. This is the crucial phase. If done well, we are ready to go to the final phase. And that will take a while, but that's when actually the new sustainable practices will become the new normal. They will be, that will become the policy or the law or, it's the way uh, how, the, how, the, how the whole market functions. And that's when we have tipped the market. We haven't solved everything, but we have moved the whole industry upwards. And if you have followed this logic, then probably you are able to uh, identify what, where is the seafood sector? Because there are a lot of FIPS projects going on and they're great, but FIPS alone will never ever change the rules of the game. They are just a project. Because as long as the forces are there, a project is an attempt to do something about it, but the forces are bigger. And so there are a lot of FIPS, but they will not change the industry. Now, I already said there are enormous amounts of standards uh, out there and, and quite a, a, a bit of fish is, is certified, but there's so many labels and it's all about the value chains and the industry and the retailers. They cannot bear all the costs of change. So, there's too much noise, there's too much, there's, there's not enough value creation, the costs are too high. Like I said, it is being uh, transferred into the value chain and then we're trying to uh, compare them and create equivalency tools. It's time to go to the other phases. And in particularly, and this is what I say, in particularly, we need to ask ourselves, where are the governments? Because the industry is doing a lot. The, I think you cannot, you can hardly ask more from the industry. I'm not saying they're perfect. They're still part of the problem, but they are doing a lot. The, the NGOs are doing a lot. The one, the organizations that are missing, the key actors that are missing are the governments. Because like I said earlier, seafood, the oceans are more than anything else, are public goods. We need to manage them in the right way. And that means that the governments need to take their responsibility. But why should they? Right, because it is much more attractive to continue getting as much fish out of the sea as possible to get an income, to get your tax revenues, to get employment, but and nobody cares about the sustainability. It's way too um, uh, it's way too attractive to continue doing business as usual. So, what is the nudge? What is the mechanism where we can actually get governments involved? Some governments are doing a good job. We need to reward them. Some governments are doing a poor job we need to call that out. And so what is the mechanism that we can think of that will move beyond certification and we, and we can actually start improving the, the, uh, the, the, the management, the, sorry, the fishery management systems uh, and including international waters. So as I promised, I would like to end with a certain idea. It's not the first time that I present this. Actually, I presented it in a, in a previous conference, the seafood conference as well, um, uh, 2030, and two years ago in Barcelona, I presented the same thing. I still think that now more than ever, the seafood sector is ready to go. Other sectors are already doing it, uh, and it is leading to huge change. I think, I really believe that the seafood sector needs to stand up and show leadership and come together. So what am I talking about? 
I'm I'm, I want to introduce the idea to create a scoring mechanism, a scoring mechanism that, that scores the quality and the maturity of fishery management system, but also the governance of international water, uh, international waters. And so what would that look like? And I just put here, uh, everybody's familiar with those energy labels for homes and electrical appliances. And this is a very power, if done well, a hugely powerful tool to, to create an uplift in a sector. The same thing is currently being done with pension funds. And so the, the benchmarking or the scoring tool is, is, is very old and very, um, and very familiar. We just need to apply to fishery management systems so that we can differentiate between the better ones and the, and the, and the poorer ones. So we can score different management systems on their maturity and the quality on how they do the policy, the governance of it, how they implement it and how they show accountability. We can break down these elements and create management maturity on all of those elements and we can actually score them a one star to a five star. And so now, or an A to a G or whatever it is, we can score better ones from weaker ones. Now, this of course, there's not one size fits all. There are different archetypes per species and per seascapes and international waters is again another one, but I'm pretty sure that we can catch the, the complexity of, sea, uh, of seafood in four, five, six, archetypes where they all need a certain fishery management system and we can score the quality of that. Now, if you can do that, you can rank them. And based on the ranking, you can recognize the better ones, you can reward the better ones, but you can also, let's say, give transparency to those who are not doing a good job. Now, not to punish them, but at least to recognize the better ones, but also to be able to link these rankings to markets. I hope, and I'm pretty sure because we're doing that in other markets as well, that we can link it to what market demand uh, is requiring. Because if you are a retailer and you have an opportunity or you have the choice between buying a certain species from a good well-managed fishery system from a poor one, 